Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So sit back and enjoy. Madeira Europis Synagogue. Here was a unique opportunity to witness how Jews of that time depicted themselves with their own hands. For the most part, they portrayed themselves as people of color, ranging from light complexions to black in skin color. The black presence in the lands of the Bible, page 15. Did you know the Luso Africans were also called Creoles? Criollo or Creole Portuguese Jews of West Africa. Origin of the word Creole. Origin of the name. See also Creole peoples. The Portuguese word for Creole is Criollo which derives from the verb kair, to raise, to bring up, and a suffix, olo, of debated origin. Originally, the word, like its Spanish equivalent, criollo, was used to distinguish the members of any ethnic group who were born and raised in the colonies from those who were born in their homeland. So in Africa, it was often applied to locally born people of wholly or partly Portuguese descent, as opposed to those born in Portugal. Creole is a Portuguese Spanish word. Criollo or Creole culture and language originated among the colonies of Iberian Jews living on the coast of West Africa shortly after the Portuguese and Spanish Inquisitions. The Creole language was the lingua franca or universal language of the enslaved peoples of the transatlantic slave trade throughout the Americas. Creole in a Red Turban by Jacques Amans, date circa 1840, style romanticism, genre portrait, media oil on canvas. Creole in a Red Turban, the historic New Orleans collection, painting in Louisiana. From the Historic New Orleans Collection, portrait of a seated young person shown in three-quarter length and set against a neutral green background. The sitter wears a white long sleeve off-the-shoulder peasant blouse, brown skirt, and a red turban or tignon. A tignon, also spelled and pronounced tayon, is a type of head covering, a large piece of material tied or wrapped around the head 
to form a kind of turban that somewhat resembles the West African Gile. It was worn by Creole women of African descent in Louisiana, beginning in the Spanish colonial period and continuing to a lesser extent to the present day. Tignan law, this headdress was the result of sumptuary laws passed in 1786 under the administration of Governor Esteban Rodriguez Myro. Called the Tignan laws, they prescribed and enforced oppressive public dress for female gens de color in colonial society. Historian Virginia M. Gold notes that Myro hoped the law would control women who have become too light-skinned or who dress too elegantly or who in reality competed too freely with white women for status and thus threatened the social order. Afro-Creole protest. Myro's intent of having the Tignan mock inferiority had a somewhat different effect according to historian Caroline Long who noted instead of being considered a badge of dishonor the Tignan became a fashion statement the bright reds blues and yellow of the scarves and the imaginative wrapping techniques employed by their wearers are said to have enhanced the beauty of the women of color. The women who were targets of this decree were invented and imaginative. They decorated tignons with their jewels and ribbons and used the finest available materials to wrap their hair. In other words, they effectively reinterpreted the law without technically breaking the law, and they continued to be pursued by men. The Tignan or headdress article links to another article named Head Tie. The continuity or use of some Hebrew customs and traditions were retained by the children of Israel in their captivity and exile naturally because they didn't have the formal education of Hebrew schools to teach them these things. Wikipedia head tie. A head tie, also known as a head wrap, is a woman's cloth head scarf that is commonly worn in many parts of West Africa and South Africa. Among Jewish women, the biblical source for covering hair comes from the Torah and the book of Bamidar, Pasha Naso, which contains the source for the obligation of a married woman to cover her hair. And Isha Sotar is a woman whose husband suspects her of having acted immorally. The Torah commands the Kohen for the priest to take various steps to demonstrate that the sultar has deviated from the modest and loyal path of the most married Jewish woman. Rashi 5, 
15 to 27. Among the procedures, the Pulsak clearly states, Ufara es rash, asha, and he shall uncover the hair of the head of the woman. 5 and 18. One can only uncover something that has previously been covered. In this case, the Torah is referring to the married woman's hair. Among Christian women in certain parts of the world, such as Africa and the Caribbean, the head tie is worn as a head covering in obedience to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4 to 13. Isaiah, the 8th century B.C. Israelite, prophesied the loss of property, clothing styles, and luxury items the women of Israel will lose in captivity and exile. Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 16 and 20. Moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. And that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their claws, and their round tires like the moon, the chains, and the bracelets, and the mufflers, the bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the tablets, and the earrings. The Creole in the red turban wore a Hebrew or Israelite or Jewish style head covering or headdress.